This was the scene at the Conservative Political Action Conference in Dallas over the weekend. Donald Trump Jr., son of the former president, was giving a speech Friday when someone yelled, quote, Trump won. That's a false claim referring to the 2020 election. And the crowd, as you can see there, went wild. The conference concludes on Sunday with a speech by former President Trump. CPAC added a summer event to its annual conference. Traditionally, it takes place in Washington each February. Organizers call it the largest and most influential gathering of conservatives in the world. But instead of setting a policy for the future, political experts say that the conference has focused on the past. And behind it all, a lingering question. If President Trump does not run for another term, who will be the next person to lead the conservative wing of the Republican Party? For more on all of this, Jacob Vaughn joins me now. He is a staff writer for the Dallas Observer and host of the Cobcast. Hey, Jacob, how did CPAC end up in Texas this year? And, uh, and what does it say about maybe CPAC moving beyond to some of those red states? Well, um, a lot of the speakers are talking about how Texas is like uh, the last stronghold of their uh, conservative values. Um, and a lot of the speakers are saying Texas will, will never give in to those values. Uh, or, or give up those values. So I think I think that's that played a big factor in in it being in Texas uh, this weekend. Well, conference attendees are being surveyed with questions about the border, critical race theory, and cancel culture. It sounds much like the agenda set by Governor Abbott at the Texas special legislative session, which just kicked off. How might those cultural issues play for Republicans going forward? Well, it's really interesting. I mean, uh, CPAC so far has basically turned into um, a watered-down version of the QAnon convention that took place in Dallas over the Memorial Day weekend. You have uh, some of the same speakers and ideologies. Um, Alan West, Louis Gomer, and Sid Miller are just a few of the speakers. Um, and like I said, you, you have uh, some of that same uh, ideology. I mean, what I've seen at the conference so far uh, seems to indicate, and I don't think this is anything new, that there's a divide in the Republican Party. Um, on one side, you have people saying, let's let's move on from Trump, the talk of a fraudulent election, and the, the crazy QAnon conspiracy theories. Uh, the thinking being, while all those things were powerful in mobilizing the party, they were just as powerful at mobilizing the left against them. Uh, on the other side, people are saying we need to double down on Trump and the rhetoric that came out of the Republican Party during his administration. Um, those seem to be the two sides of the spectrum, and there's a lot of gray area in between. Um, and I kind of, I kind of feel like there's a bit of a power struggle uh, at the at the convention this weekend between those two sides. And I, I think whichever one That's um, prevails. Is going to is going to be uh, kind of what we see the most of uh, in the party in in the near future. I'm I'm a bit surprised to hear you say that, Jacob. In part because um, we have seen uh, at the that the CPAC um, conference organizers they really control who who the speakers are, the agenda, and in many ways the tone. And former President Trump's presence continues to loom large over the Republican Party and the organizers of CPAC. Um, I'm also wondering um, how other Republicans who are contemplating a White House bid factoring, I guess, let's call it the Trump factor, into the possibility of their runs for the presidency. Well, um, yeah, I mean, while there seems to be th this, uh, this divide, um, just generally speaking in the party, uh, I feel like if you speak to uh, the followers, um, it, it might be a little bit harder to, to get that out of them. And I think that um, people that are contemplating a potential uh, run as the uh, Republican candidate uh, are, are definitely still trying to feel which way the, the wind is blowing. Um, if I think if, if Trump decides to run again, uh, they, they might have to they might have to decide to drop out because I, I don't I don't see um, at least just from what I've seen at CPAC so far, uh, I don't see any of Trump's power um, going away. So I think that hmm. it's it's all still really up in the air at this point. 
It, it is in some ways an interesting dance among um, Republicans who support the former president, uh, but might want to see themselves at the top of the ballot. And one of those people that people uh, that that political observers are speculating about is Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. He actually recently beat former President Trump in a straw poll at a recent conservative gathering. Jacob, who else is on the roster for CPAC's straw poll? Um, I'm not entirely sure. The The big name does seem to be uh, Ron DeSantis. Um, just speaking to a couple people uh, in line at CPAC, uh, he seems to be the, the safe candidate, uh, the candidate that um, is maybe not as powerful as mobilizing the right as Trump is, but uh, definitely not as powerful as mobilizing the left against them as well. Uh, one last question for you on COVID-19. Uh, when the government's failure to vaccinate as many people as they hope was brought up, the crowd at CPAC cheered, and Congressman Madison Cawthorn alleged that President Biden's offer to send people door to door to provide vaccines was actually a plot to confiscate people's Bibles and guns. Does there seem to be any concern there about rising infections and deaths, particularly among the unvaccinated? No, none at all. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any any concern for that at all. Uh, some of the speakers um, at the convention were actually at a rally I covered in the very early days of the pandemic, um, where they told people uh, they were proud to see a lack of masks uh, and uh, social distancing and were being very alarmist about the idea of a COVID-19 uh, vaccine, which, which hadn't been uh, created yet. Uh, so, no, there's there's definitely no regard uh, for those concerns. At this conference, like you mentioned, uh, you have people joking about the effectiveness of masks, talking about the idea that, that Fauci designed the coronavirus. And again, like you mentioned, the idea that Biden's door-to-door -door vaccine strategy uh, will be used to take people's guns. Um, no evidence of, of that, but uh, it doesn't stop them from saying it, so. All right. Jacob Vaughn, thank you for joining me. Thank you very much.